As the great Lionel Richie once said, all night long, all night. If you're not into epically long late night grinding sessions, then this epic game between Alpha Zero and Stockfish may not be for you. But on December 6th, 2017, the match went down between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, and this was game eight. A positional affair similar to the start that we've already seen a few times if you've watched the video reviews of game three and game five, we're assuming that you have. If not, click the links and go ahead and do that. Here again, we see bishop to b7. Game three featured the move bishop a6 by Stockfish. Game five featured the move bishop to b7. And here, the mainline Queen's Indian approach with bishop to e7. Not satisfied with his results, Stockfish chooses to vary it up, uh, mix it up once again with bishop to b4 check. And after bishop to d2, bishop e7, knight to c3, you see that one of the main reasons why black actually gives this check and then wastes that tempo is to put the bishop on d2. You might be thinking, why, right? Why help somebody develop a piece ever? Well, the main reason is that, and if you've seen the other two games, you know that most of the time white's threat to push the d5 pawn is based on the compensation white's going to get on the d file uh, and in this case when the bishop is on d2 as much as it's already a developed piece it's actually kind of a common positional trick if you will in this line that the bishop is not necessarily on its favorite square on d2 so uh, this is all theory and in this queen's indian after the move c6 e4 d5 the position you're seeing has been played many times by the world's best chess players uh you name it magnus carlson vichy anand pavel Yanov. those are just some of the names we saw uh, as we as we prepared it and looked at this position but every single one of those players had one thing in common in this position they all played the move e takes d5 this is the main idea for white in this line normally to capture and after c takes d5 Put the knight on e5. You're building pressure in the center, taking advantage of what is now a pinned d5 pawn due to the tactics there. And white goes on to have a slight edge in, in most of these middle games based on the, the fact that the tension here favors white. When we say tension favors one side, it usually means that one side has the luxury of building up on that tension because it has the option to capture, whereas the other side can never really break the tension, at least not with serious tactical or positional consequences. So that's what that means when you hear the tension favors somebody. There's a quick chess pro tip. So uh, that's what we were expecting the whole world when you see this position played, the mainline theory being e takes d5. But uh, Alpha Zero had something else in mind. Played the move e5, which though not an official novelty, that only happens after knight e4 castles. Castles is the official novelty Alpha Zero played. Uh, this position has already been played only a few times, so we can already consider ourselves in new roads given that Alpha Zero did not play e takes d5, as we said most of the world's best grandmasters play. Uh, and usually, the move e5 is followed by c takes d5, specifically because you try to create this tension here. And once again, you're trying to eventually maybe take here, have double pawns you can play against, or again, have pressure on a diagonal where as long as the structure remains the same, black's bishop may not be as good as the white counterpart. However, again, alpha zero has something else in mind. He castles. And after bishop a6, you may see some of the reasons why white doesn't normally go for this line, because you're kind of in a position where no matter what you do, that c4 pawn is now going to be lost due to the fact that it's pinned to the rook on f1. Alpha zero doesn't have a lot of options for saving it. And, uh, and therein lies the, uh, the mind-blowing, I guess, again, uh, another mind-blowing pawn sacrifice uh, by alpha zero in this match. He plays b3. Not because he intends to take back on c4 and just be down a pawn, but because he intends to give up the pawn with the move b4. Officially, we are in uncharted territory where the first, the first thing you think when you look at it is, okay, if this is such a simple approach by white, why have another top grandmasters play it? Uh, you start to think black must be able to hold on to this pawn, and, and if he can do that, it's a healthy pawn, why isn't black doing fine? The problem here is that the positional features specifically the weak dark squares, followed by a very direct assault from Alpha Zero, make it pretty clear where White's compensation is. And suddenly you might be you might be seeing lines like this played by top grandmasters before you know it. If Alpha Zero can do it, why can't we? Top chess players will likely be saying. After B4, threats of A4 and B5 and threats on the diagonal are a problem. So Black decides I'm gonna stop that with B5 and why is that not a good idea to anchor in my protected pass pawn anyway? But here comes knight to D2. And once that knight comes into e4, we see that the natural approach of assaulting on the dark squares is, is going to be pretty pretty fun for white. 
Queen to g4 played first because who doesn't like threats on f6 check and maybe I'll bluff at an attack. But after the move knight to d7, you see my intentions are very clear as white. I really just want to play knight c5, force an exchange because you don't want to drop that bishop and with it, likely the c6 pawn to follow. And we look at a structure where everything is equal besides two things. Black has the extra c pawn, but white has the much, 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 can I add another much, more dominant bishop. And we're seeing that human types of analysis, or let's say abstract evaluations, who has more space, whose pieces are more active, right? And really, who has the ability to create threats, right? That's a practical way to look at stuff, but if you have the ability to improve your position, that's worth a lot, right? And Alpha Zero certainly thought it was worth a pawn, even though this line has never been played before. And we're going to see over the next series of moves, maybe I tricked you by saying that this was an all-night-long Lionel Richie session, which it is. It is a grind fest like no other. But I don't know that there's a lot more to look at other than White is going to grab the D-file, use the space advantage that that he, again, uh, deep mind that it has and uh, black is going to be basically playing shuffle puck until white decides where and how he wants to infiltrate a5 is exactly what you want to do you want to try to undermine and give yourself space but these immediate threats are really nothing white's pairing them one by one here comes bishop b4 and we're just going to start pushing them back pushing back the pieces that's exactly what white does over the next series of moves Let's induce another weakness. Hit h7 so that g6 has to be played. And when we back up the lady, now we have other ways to create counterplay. So without, without trying to overdo the picture that black has nothing to do here, I'm going to overdo the picture and say that black has nothing to do here. The c pawn being the biggest advantage is not going anywhere uh, and likely doesn't even have access to a good Snickers bar. It's just it's doing nothing. And white will be able to poke and prod wherever you want. Build up on the H file, maybe bluff at opening things up and going to sack town. Maybe I switch over to the A file. Of course, a strong player like Stockfish is not going to just fall prey for any sort of force combination. But as that builds up and the pressure gets, it gets more on the king side and more on the queen side, that balance and that inability to deal with it, because if you switch to guarding the A file, then it's just the D file that becomes the other place that white is playing tickle with, including the H file, right? So black is really just sort of stuck to sitting tight. And nothing highlights that more than after queen e7 that alpha zero played queen to f6. Let's look at what would have happened here if the queen trade had happened, because I already analyzed it. After takes and takes, uh, I had to consider this because knowing that Alpha Zero really brought the heat on the H file the, when the queens remained on the board. I'm thinking, why didn't Stockfish take this chance to tr trance to trade? Trance to trade. Uh, after Bishop A8, Rook H1, we're going to see that White has White has all the cards here. Name a square that Black can move to without losing material. Name a move that can be made. G5 allows H6, and this pawn will be picked off with a weakness. Taking here allows Rook takes, and this pawn is going to fall with with uh, likely with interest in a mating net. Black is just sitting tight, and nothing emphasizes that more than, let's say, a line like, okay, I analyzed h6 first because it really shows us tight, but to be clear, probably rook a1 is even more accurate because black is not going to take here. No reason why we're worried about that. Let's go to the a file first and force the rook trade. Now we can either take on g6 or play h6, by the way. I think both win to the clear plan we're going to highlight, which is that once the bishop comes to e5, it's only a matter of time before our king infiltrates. We fill the d6 square, not a takeable piece due to what the d-pawn will then do to you. The king comes into e5 and give that evaluation bar 3, 2, 1, and it just keeps going up over there on the left side of the board because there's really nothing black can do to the capture. The king infiltrates, and you see... This is a great example of where a human, I knew this position was an easy win for white as soon as I said it, right? I guess, what was that? Like back here or even before, queen takes f6. Because I look at this and my human perspective says black has no squares. And if the rooks come off the board, this infiltration of the king, this is, uh, this is good Russian endgame stuff 101, right? There's nothing black can do. Moving the bishop off would drop the c-pawn and with it, everybody else. So... Again, Alpha Zero is having clearly a deeper understanding. Uh, he's seeing beyond the horizon. The, the computer knows via its machine learning, its self-taught approach, that the, uh, that the win is there even before Stockfish does. And, and nothing is more fascinating, I think, than seeing the world's strongest engine outplayed by, by something that can we even call it the world's strongest engine. I don't, know, I don't even know why Alpha Zero is still playing chess and why it hasn't you know, just said, hey, you know what, I don't need you guys anymore. I'm going to learn how to walk or something. I don't know. So uh, Queen F6 is played, and Black doesn't take on F6, backs up the Queen. But we're going to see that the grind fest continues, building up on the H file, taking when it's most convenient, because now I have other tactics that can come. 
uh, on g6 and, and building up with the f pawns marching. Again, black doesn't really have any squares. The queen offers the trade then. A little bit better for black there because at least the bishop would have some squares. So uh, white says no thank you. Some tickle is played here, but the point is it's not tickle without a reason. The threats of bishop g5, bishop f6, and then even ideas like taking g6 where we clear the way for crushing attacks, that type of threat forces black to play c3, which is now making its only positional advantage vulnerable, no longer protected, right? So it's like every action is an equal and opposite, opposite reaction. At first, c3, like, well, why did he play it, knowing that in the next few moves, alpha 0 simply corrals that lost calf, and, and now we really like white's position because you're not even down material. But you see that there really wasn't a choice because of other lacks, uh, you know, lack of options, right? And, and white having some concrete threats like bringing the bishop to g5. So we continue along this path of playing very patient moves, very disciplined moves. Of course, e5 not capturable due to the fact that d8's hanging. f4 now comes. We put the bishop on f6. Uh, with the weaknesses that have been induced, there's no way that black holds on to those, even if the f6 pawn falls. And uh, that's exactly the kind of thing that white points out, grabbing the A file. This is, this is like Anatoly Karpov chess, you know, this is like Anatoly Karpov having a fantasy, right? And right next to him is Rublevsky, and things are getting weird in that bed. You know what I'm talking about. Bishop takes g6, rook d7, king f2. Uh, and again, we look at this position with clear understanding that white is crushing black, right? Dominance of the dark squares, pieces that can't move, and pawns all on the color square of your favorite, everybody's favorite bishop at this point. Um, and that's what happens here. Black just has to sit tight, start sacrificing pawns in the way that only computers do. No human would ever play h5, but a computer sees it as the same loss either way, because the computer's like, well, I can't just sit here and allow this to come. But of course, h5 is a, like, no human would ever just give you a passed h pawn, right? Uh, so it does change it up a little bit because it gives black that counterplay, but it only is a matter of time before now the c6 and the b5 pawn fall, and uh, white goes on to to just win with the queen side, and finally here, Stockfish does just resign. Strange how Stockfish decides when to resign and when not, but I'm not here to try to pretend to think like an engine. I'm here to try to help us human beings understand why the engines did what they did, and I hope that I've done that for you and that you maybe have learned something. Please leave a comment here, regardless of where you are watching this. Check out our video library on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever that is. I appreciate you tuning in for what was, of course, Game 8 in the epic match that was between Deep Minds, Alpha Zero, and Stockfish.